Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Iberian review. To be honest, uh, if it wasn't for the relegation battle in La Liga, everything else seems kind of decided. There's not much happening and you know, all the results that we can talk about, yes, uh, might be interesting uh, on them own, but in the larger context are rather meaningless. I think when we look, for instance, at La Liga, uh, I guess the, if we just look on the top, Barcelona is going to become champions despite both of the big boys having uh, wobbles uh, midweek. The big question is, uh, can Atletico Madrid um, snatch second place from Real Madrid? Potentially, it is only two points. Will Real Madrid care? No, because all they care about is A, the Champions League, B, the Copa del Rey final where they can get silverware and kind of salvage the season that way. In Portugal, um, it's maybe a little bit uh, tighter up top. It's still a four-point uh, cushion for Benfica. Given that Benfica uh, are not looking all that convincing, but neither does Porto, to be honest. Um, the, problem, the problem is that the rest of the league is not up to snuff for the big boys either. And so, yeah, so it's down to Braga, uh, who have all but secured their third spot, which is a major uh, result for them, sporting only going to Europa League. Braga also have qualified for the cup final. So, meaning they can go for a title, but they will have to play Porto there. But I think the big one definitely is in uh, Spain, the relegation battle. That is not only, only exciting for the number of teams involved, it's also... Uh, relegation battle where there are many, many, many points. I mean, Espanyol is sitting now in 19th with 31 points. And I guess Celta Vigo with 39 is just about safe at the moment. So, But um, 35, 33, 33, 31, 31, it's a really, really high level relegation battle. Only Elche is more or less down and out. Even they got a win. Uh, over the past two weeks. So uh, that is going to be interesting. What makes it even more interesting is we have a really big name involved in there in Valencia who really seem to be in trouble and you really wonder, can Valencia survive this uh, on paper? They have actually quite some good players, but they don't have a good team. Um, at the moment, I fear that Espanyol are going down again. There's a whole lot of issues uh, there. But also Getafe don't look like the team that can make it, although they get the Bordalas back. So uh, that will be interesting. Even if they would go down, if they stay with Bordalas, I actually think there might be something coming. But I want to start uh, in Portugal and we'll start with the cup, which has such a weird scheduling. Uh, all the quarter, the semifinals being played at different slots. Braga, a 2-2 against Nacional, it's nothing to write home about, but they had a 5-0 lead from the first leg, so they make it to, to a final, and then Porto already win 2-1 uh, away at Family Cao. So it's all kind of set for a Braga-Porto final, two against second against third, most likely in, in the league. Um, I think that is an interesting final, and it's also played at the wonderful Estadio Nacional, on the outskirts of Lisbon, uh, look this stadium up. I said it in a previous review video videos. It's it's one of the most unique stadiums um, in Europe. I would say, especially with the run of it, it's one side, really, really open. Um, in the league, Braga also got a pretty big win over Casa Pia, which are kind of a very good promoted team uh, that hold their own, but probably will not make it into Europe. Porto get a 2-0 away uh, at Passos, kind of um, getting the pressure onto Benfica. However, it needed a, a yellow-red um, for Passos just before the half, and then Tarami with a penalty, and Martinez late on settled that one. Benfica themselves get a 1-0 over Sturil. Yes, Jamaro Pimis, a bit automated just before the half. Makes it 1-0, kind of, you know, get them really uh, back on winning ways, because there were some wobbles. Uh, you know, just around the Champions League. And Sporting uh, win nominally the biggest game with a 2-0 win at Guimaraes, um, who had a goal disallowed before for that, but Pedro Gonzalez uh, and Arthur Gomez, and there's another uh, offside goal for Sporting in the, in the end, make it a, a victory for Sporting. And Vitória de Guimaraes is kind of this, uh, you would think they had a fifth power in Portugal, but a clear fifth power. They might not even be dead at this point. Um, 
going further uh, again Braga really underlining their Champions League ambitions they have 4-1 over Portimonense um, we had then Benfica getting another winner Gilles Vicente both goals coming rather late through Chiquinho and Grimaldo in the 74th and the 86th Porto win the Derby uh, Taremi I think uh, scored the goal and then shortly so, so, so after um, they even get a red card so they need to hang on there but that is a very, very one-sided Derby overall and you know even if sporting beat family cow 2-1 it will not really help them in the champions league ambitions um, as we see um, in the current standings uh, sporting are a long way out Prague is probably getting this qualification spot which may mean champions league portuguese teams have been really really good and you know if things fall their way this actually could mean an automatic spot as well given uh, who wins uh, the different comp Technically, fourth place not quite yet secures you uh, the Europa League spot, but I am assuming Porto and Braga in the final, and in that sense, fourth uh, would. If by some reason Family Cow wins that cup, of course, the spot will go to Family Cow. Um, I we can see here also uh, expect standings tells pretty pretty much story on the bottom is very much design on top is in design, and there's a, a whole lot of in between. Give you also the next two rounds uh, i think benfica braga is the biggest game in there but you would expect benfica probably to win but that is maybe a chance for porto to claw a little bit more back and uh, benfica have been a little bit nervous uh as of late let's go over to spain we have three rounds to cover in La Liga, and as I said, it was more or less all about relegation. So I want to highlight though the key game games there, but also you know focus on the top four battle, and um, you know of course the big guys too. Uh, um, Espanyol Cadiz nil nil doesn't help really anyone. Uh, maybe more Cadiz than Espanyol, uh, but Espanyol, as I said, are looking in trouble. Osasuna get a 3-2 over Betis uh, and you know Osasuna is also they are probably not going anywhere in the league cup final it's all about the cup final for them because they can finally get, get a title uh, that they do win against the Real Betis uh, puts a big spanner in the Champions League hopes for Real Betis uh, which is something that honestly with the multitude of red cards they have been receiving, uh, receiving Betis have thrown away that opportunity because i think um just by quality they should be there also joaquin announced his retirement which is also kind of sad but you know he was up there in age um we had real sociedad uh, getting a two one win over rayo meaning uh they further separation from pepe but this more or less this secures their position there uh Valladolid, um Pretty big win over Girona because Girona is a team that can win against almost anyone. Uh, and Valladolid is definitely down there, a relegation struggles with enough points for the moment. But it has to uh, see, we have to see uh, if, if if they can ride, ride it home. They're always kind of uh, swimming there. It's one of the uh, Barbadra is probably one of the smaller teams in La Liga despite having a very famous president. Uh, Real Madrid goals at the goals from Asensio and Militao give them a 2-0 win over Celta. Not much to talk home about there. Uh, Valencia get a pretty big, big win through Alino and then the Verdu on goal uh, just before the half. 2-0 away to last place. Elche it is a local derby. There was a little um, let's say excursion of Valencia fans. Uh, invasion maybe there to really support the team because they badly need it barcelona get a one nil over atletico madrid um i would say this was overall a, more, a bit of a lucky win uh i don't want to discount the, the win because it's a crack right one we really thought that uh atletico madrid actually could do something to barcelona but in the end barcelona get that win because atletico cannot convert their chances and if Lewandowski would have played it over at one point I think it was Ferran Torres who got the winning goal at one point uh, Lev Lewandowski was running free on the athletic goal and he wanted to score himself a little bit less self selfish they win this actually 2-0 so it's a 1-0 uh, kind of a surprising result Sevilla huge win also over Villarreal and again this is goals for the top four race because that actually meant not that Real Sociedad was the very big winners of that round uh, the winner coming very, very late through a uh, towering headie by Ennesiri. They call him now Ernesiri uh, because of that, because he was really uh, 
on a different level. Scoring that goal over a Villarreal side that has been pushing for potentially Champions League, but definitely going now into the European spaces. Midweek. I think the headlines there were grabbed by uh, the losses by form of Real Madrid and Barcelona. I mean, uh, Girona beat Real Madrid 4-2 and Castellanos uh, is the first player in ages to score four goals against Real Madrid. One time it was 4-1, uh, Vinicius had, 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 to, had made it 2-1 before the half. And again, Vinicius, it is uh, so annoying that he gets abused again, but he also uh, kind of gets too much involved in the, in, in, in the crowd and wants to show up. It's a really, really tough thing to navigate. I have to, I have to say for Vinicius and also for the league and anyone to, who wants to comment on that. But uh, credit where credit is to Girona beating... Um, Real Madrid 4-2. Betis had a chance to get back in the Champions League race, but they cannot get it done. Uh, Real Sot hang uh, holding out for a nil-nil. Uh, had even probably the better chances, but I think Betis had more of that game. Atletico Madrid continued their uh, good run, bouncing back. I mean, Nastasic gave Mallorca completely undeserved lead uh, Rodrigo de Paul before they have, and then Morata and Carrasco make it a proper scoreline. And this is an Atletico Madrid team that actually is sort of entertaining, which is not something that we could have said so far. Getafe finds themselves in more tra trouble. Almeria get a big win, and that kind of implicated Getafe going down. Um, Rayo beating Barca 2-1. Again, I mean, Lewandowski gets had to stay on top in the Pichichi standings, but uh, it was all, all about the two Garcias who scored the goals in Barcelona, looking a little bit anemic uh, while uh, doing so. Another big win for Valencia, 2-1 uh, uh, over Real Valladolid, so they got six points, which basically moved them now out of the relegation zone. Uh, but it's still a, lo a way to, to go. Karl Lehring gave actually Valladolid the lead and then uh, Diakabi and very late on uh, Guerra gets the win uh, and Villarreal 4 to away Espanyol mean that Espanyol are also on their way down and then um, another severe win away to Athletic Club not ex uh, especially expected. Uh, two offside goals early on for Athletic Club and then um, Sevilla winning through Lucas Ocampo's penalty late on. So uh, that kind of puts Sevilla more or less at ease. They're now a mid-table team, have 41 points. You always say 40 should uh, be enough. No, 40. I, statistically, purely 40 is not enough to avoid relegation. Uh, but you know, most of the time it is enough. And then we look at the past week and more Real Sociedad glory 2-0 at Osasuna. Again, this is an Osasuna team that is more or less looking forward to the cup final. Uh, Real Madrid in an entertaining game uh, against Almeria get it 4-2. Three uh, first half hat-trick by uh, Karim Benzema uh, in the 5th, 17th and a penalty in the 42nd before uh, Lazaro, Rodrigo and Rogatone make it a 4-2 scoreline. Barca for once not winning for a 1-1-0 one, one but a resounding win. They always seem to win against Betis Big. Also helps, you know, Christensen scores the goal. It actually shows how good the defense for Barcelona, which is something I don't want to say about Barcelona. But then it helps if Gonzalez gets sent off uh, with two ye yellow cards in short succession. Lewandowski, Rafinha, then and Rodriguez own goal. Um, Finish of that game. The big story of it is that Yamal made his debut at 15 years of age for Barca, almost even scored. And I'm thinking, do we need to have a 15 year old playing for Barca? You know, kind of. I find it this he will hit the height like we had with Ansu. And then there's an injury, and it actually might derail their careers. I don't like Wonder Kids, uh, to be honest. I, I'd rather have a, a normal progression. And I wish that Barca would follow that. It was a huge relegation battle between Cardiff and Valencia. Uh, played, you know, early uh, early on down there, very sunny. And with Cardiff's kid, it looks very much like it's Brazil playing. Uh, they could uh, go out the tunnel lead, go Sergio got the old making two lead right after half. Uh, Lino pulls one back after a horrible goalkeeping error, but the goal goalie for Cal Cadiz uh, definitely made up for that one with some great saves. And Cadiz hanging on, and Barca and Valencia streak a little bit stop after having two uh, wins now, they are still dangling right up there. But Cadiz now is uh, two points ahead of Valencia, almost looking mid table, but 
the looks are deceiving in this case. Another big one was Espanyol uh, having a fighting chance, uh, winning against um, Getafe with a thanks to Jose Lu penalty, which kind of keeps them in there. And Real Madrid also cannot get out of it. Uh, losing at home 2-5 to Atletico Madrid. Uh, yes, Atletico Madrid had a quick 3-0 uh, lead. Molina, Jimenez and Morata. However, then two goals. Uh, Carl Lerin just before the half. And then Escudero in the 74th makes it 2-3 before two goals for Fernandez and Depay. Uh, sent Atletico Madrid home as winners from a stadium. And the last time they played that they actually secured their championship, if you will uh, if you remember that one. And then yesterday evening, Mallorca won one against Athletic Club. Athletic Club's uh, European editions take also a little bit of a damper with that one. And then Girona, 2-0 over Sevilla. I mean, it's an inconsequential game, but it actually means that Girona still have a slight potential of getting European spots and Sevilla may not get, unless they, of course, win the Europa League, which Sevilla uh, want to do. So... Looking over at the standings, as I said, Barcelona will become champions. It's just a matter uh, when, not if. Uh, we have the top four also more or less decided. Yes, it's five points, but I think Real Sociedad is going to snatch that fourth spot. Finally, we get a different Spanish team going into the Champions League, but it is really all about the relegation. I mean, at the moment, Elche, of course, are down. Espanyol not looking good. They also have a really, really tough schedule ahead. Getafe might survive it, but you know, there's also Almeria, Valencia, Rayo and Cadiz in there. Cadiz at the moment looking the best. And I guess for the casual La Liga fan, the big question, of course, is will Valencia survive a huge team like Valencia? Um, but you know, there's also ownership issues, blah, blah, blah. We have already talked about. Uh, according to the um, expected saying they will survive it. It is Getafe who will go down for now. But, you know. Everything can happen, to be honest. We have the cup final coming up next week between Osasuna and Real Madrid is played in the horrible stadium in Sevilla. Uh, that means we have now a midweek round that starts actually on Tuesday on the post date of this video um, with uh, Almeria against Elche, another kind of uh, re relegation um, strugglings. Uh, teams. We have also Barca, Osasuna, Real Sociedad, Real Madrid. Uh, a huge derby de la Comunidad between Valencia and Villarreal. Uh, both need the points. Cadiz have to go to Atleti. It's really hard as well. Um, so, you know, you know, in Sevilla, SES, Espanol, there's quite some stuff in there. Uh, and then the week, you know, we have the weekend, the cup final, and then the week after with the Barcelona der derby, which is probably not boding well for Espanol. Uh, Barca, Barca might I could potentially clinch the title uh, then already and Getafe uh, have to go to Real Madrid so this is a reason why they are looking so bad at the moment so yeah that was it from me please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel for more more videos like this and I'll talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!